I'm going to start with the big news, as I just mentioned, UFC 249, supposedly happening at the Tashi Palace in California on an Indian reservation. Um, the main event, Justin Gaethje stepping in for Habib Nurmagomedov. Obviously, Habib is stuck over in Russia due to travel sanctions, and, you know, obviously not even a lot more stuff. Like, he's not in the, probably the best training conditions, can't train at all. And Justin Gaethje taking on Tony Ferguson, the former interim champ, who's won 11 fights in a row, I think. I don't know. Gaethje, obviously, three KOs in a row. Angel, off the, by the way, we're gonna talk, we're gonna get into this entire card, because there's so many awesome fights on here, but we have to talk about most of these, if not all of these. Angel, you hear the announcement, you hear the news. What was your first reaction to finding out Justin Gaethje stepping in, the card is happening, the fight is happening, for an interim belt? It's crazy. It's entertainment, which is all we care for at this point in time. As far as, uh, you know, who it is, I mean, I just, I don't even care anymore. <laughs> With everything going on, I didn't even care. I was just like, you know, at least something's happening. So that's all I cared about at that moment. We have some sort of MMA going on. So that's all I cared about. Yeah. Do you, do you like the fight for Gaethje and Ferguson? Cause obviously there was talk of, you know, Connor, he might step in or this guy might step in. Like, do you think it was a fight to make? I feel like they almost should have just made Connor versus Gaethje at that point. And then that way they would have had their next challenger ready for Habib or Tony if that ever happens. So I think I would have preferred that fight more. And it probably, viewership-wise, probably would have been better. Not saying this won't get eyes because it's going to be the only sports thing. But compared to the amount of eyes it could have got if Connor was on it, it would have been a very significant difference in my opinion, and I think that would have been like the move for the US UFC in my opinion at that point. Because Connor Gaethje made sense, and Gaethje wanted that fight. I'm not sure if Connor wanted it, but I don't think Connor would back down from a fight at this point. So, and the money probably would have been there for Connor, so it would have made a lot of sense in my opinion to do the Connor Gaethje fight instead of the Tony Tony Gaethje match, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean it made a lot of sense financially for Connor. I don't think Connor wanted to do it though. Um, you know, he, uh, his coach said, you know, there's no way he was going to fight given all the stuff that's going on right now. And I can't blame him, but Justin Gaethje stepping up, absolute badass move, a real bad motherfucker, you know, all the BMF talk a couple months ago. Justin Gaethje is a for real. <laughs> he, he's a, he's, yeah, exactly. But Justin Gaethje is a for real BMF, um, obviously three knockout wins in a row. And I'm going to go on the record right now and say that I think Justin Gaethje has a damn good chance of beating Tony Ferguson. Um, and a lot of people think Tony is just going to walk through him. I know a lot of people think Tony would just walk through tons of people in the division. And uh, you know what? I'm high on Tony Ferguson, but I've never been on high, like as high on him as a lot of other people are. I think Justin Gaethje, uh, listen, it's really, really early. It's not even early. It's 10 days from now. That's fucking crazy. Anyways, it's not that early. But, uh, like, straight initial reaction, I'm going to pick Justin Gaethje to win. Like, we'll get close to the fight, and we'll see if it actually happens. But, like, Jay- uh, Gaethje is an amazing gas tank. He's one of the few guys in the division that I feel like can kind of stand with Tony in terms of conditioning. Um, and then, like, obviously, his kicking, he has an insane – I don't know the amount of, like – he has a couple – TKO win just from leg kicks, and then he, they play such a big, big role. And Tony still is only a year and a half removed from that giant surgery on his leg. Um, I think Tony's really, really hittable, and Justin has amazing knockout power. Um, we see that in his last three wins. I'm a giant Justin Gaethje fan. I think this fight's going to be a banger regardless, but initial reaction, I'm picking Gaethje. Probably too early to do that, but whatever. The co-main event, still happening. Um, Rose Namajunas and Jessica Andraj. Uh, this fight was obviously really, really, you know, we were all excited for it. The one at 237 was an amazing fight. We're glad it's sticking together. Um, but as for new fights, this is, this is what we particularly want to talk about. Um, there's some ones that are sticking together and some that are new. One of those new ones is Greg Hardy versus Jorgen DeCastro. Well, I, and another one, Vincent Luque, Nico Price, um, Alexander Hernandez, Omar Morales, Marlon Vera, Ray Borg, Michael Johnson, Kama Worthy. Uh, these are all the new ones. Uh, Sajar Eubanks, Sarah Moras, Ryan Spann, Sam Alvey. And then the big one, Francis Ngannou, Jorginho Rosenstrike. Of all those fights I just listed, which is probably the one that you're most happy you got added to this card? 
got added. Oh, uh, definitely the Arzinho, uh and Ghani fight. I mean, that's straight. Just that, in theory, you know, because you know we've had uh, we've thought certain fights are going to be bangers, and it hasn't happened. But in theory, that fight should be really good. I guess, yeah, that was kind of a given. I, I'll take that back. Outside of Nganu Rosenstrike, which is the one that you're most looking forward to, because that one's a fucking given. Oh, boy. Mm. Oh, man, was the Uriah Hall fight added to that? I don't no, know. You but you know what? Fuck it. We'll talk about that one. Uriah Hall sticking in there. He's going to fight on the card against Jacare Sosa. We've been hyping <laughs> yeah. this matchup up for a long time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, I didn't even know you mentioned it because it wasn't on that card, was it originally? I don't it was originally remember. on the card, but it's staying on there now. It's staying on there, man. I don't even see. The thing is, I liked all the fights that were already on there, or they were going to be added at some point, you know, or you know, we're already in the making. There's not really anything that I was like too excited for. They got added to because everything was already like everything that was pre-existing. I already kind of liked. It. So, like, I guess, like, now that I think about it, the Greg Hardy one is, like, cool, but it's not like I'm super excited for Greg Hardy, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we massively hyped for your Rye Hall and Jocka Ray Sosa. I think, you know, we've hyped up your Rye Hall for a long time. I've been a massive Rye Hall fan, really, ever since I started watching the sport. Obviously, his tough run, where he was just knocking out dudes left and right, the Adam Sella knockout, probably one of my favorite knockouts ever. And then, obviously, the big one, the big win for me is still the Gegard Musasi one. That that just fucking amazing combination. Still to date, I believe, the only person to TKO Gegard. After that, he went on a bit of a cold streak. You know, he lost to Gegard in a rematch, lost to, lost to Derek Brunson, um, lost to Robert Whitaker. But from, from that, he's won three of his last four, knocked out Jocko, arguably should have beaten Costa if Costa didn't treat his balls like a cat toy and just fucking... <laughs> just beat the shit out of his nutsack and didn't get penalized for it at all. I'm totally not still angry at that at all. Um, anyways, he knocked out Bevan Lewis, and then he got the nice winner, Antonio Carlos Jr., who at the time I believe was streaking. I believe uh, uh, Carlos Jr. was going into that one with a really nice winning streak, again, off the top of my head. But giant Uriah Hall fan, we'll see if he can, you know, kind of jump into that title picture. Uh, other fights that I'm really excited for, Marlon Vera, Ray Borg is going to be a banger, man. I'm so excited for that one. Mar- obviously, Ray Borg is a no commodity at this point. He challenged DJ for the belt. He's been around for a long time. Not really that long, but, you know, he, he's he been a very – he's bounced between bantamweight and flyweight, and he's been legit the whole time. Two wins in a row coming into this one. And the Marlon Vera is one of the baddest motherfuckers that we never talk about. He's currently on a five-fight finish streak with a lot of really, really nice ones in there. And he was going to fight uh, Sean O'Malley not long ago. That got canceled. This fight's going to be a banger. Um, and then, obviously, Luke and Nico Price have never been in a bad fight. It was actually a rematch. I'm super hyped for that one. Um, yeah, there's a lot to like. Michael Johnson, comma worthy, is a nice shout as mm-hmm. well. Michael Johnson. Mm-hmm. Michael Johnson is one of my favorite UFC fighters. And honestly, it's just, just being honest, the dude, he's never in a bad fight. And he's the exact, I don't even know who I'd compare him to. Like, he wins the fights he shouldn't and loses the ones that he shouldn't. Like, he, you know, he loses to Stevie Ray, and then he knocks out Dustin Poirier. You know what I mean? He loses to Jonathan Brotkins, and then he 30-26 is Tony Ferguson. You know, this makes sense, but I don't know. I know, I feel like I know there's someone else. You're exactly right, but I can't think of who it is off the top of my head. Who's in that? Who's in that that situation? Someone. Uh, Yeah, he's fighting. He's fighting on the undercard. uh, Tony Ferguson, who you know, a couple of years ago, he straight up thirty twenty six his ass. Like it was just. I remember I, I watched that fight. That fight was an absolute masterpiece, man. He's. He's got some nice ass wins on his record, so I hope he can get the win here. Because I thought he won his last fight, and before that, I thought he beat. Um, actually, he didn't beat him, but he was facing Josh Emmett, and Josh Emmett was getting dominated. He got knocked out in the final minute of that fight. That one sucked.